Hi guys, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Just caught the end of Old Faithful going off. Good timing. Good timing. I hope I had gotten the beginning of it, but yeah, they're actually monitoring the camera pretty good today. Um, there's a lot of heated water currently going on at the different hot pools and the geysers at Yellowstone. Very concerning. Um, I mean, they're all, all steaming. I'll show you some um, clips of this that I recorded earlier as I was putting things together. We had um, M class 9.9, one point less than an X flare yesterday that should be impacting the earth tomorrow or the day after. Um, we got cannibal CMEs currently um, coming towards the earth. And as you know, um, coronal mass ejections, at first they didn't know if it was just a solar flares or coronal mass ejections, but there was two coronal mass ejections that are heading towards the earth. And as you know, they do create earthquakes and adverse weather. Yeah, all, all the uh, different hot pools and um, the geysers are really, really active today. Um, I downloaded some data. I'll show you that. But first, I'll go to these um, events that are going on with the sun. Yeah, the uh, CMEs happened um, late yesterday. There's one going off. And another going off. Yeah, um, yeah, Earth directed. Here's an image of the solar flare activity. We're not even at the peak yet. Getting close, but supposedly the next um, session of solar flare cycle, supposedly that's already started. And, or they're overlapping, if that's the case. Boy, Lord help us. Right here is the... Uh, M9.92. Okay. So they do have what they call a cannibal CME alert. At least two CMEs are heading to Earth following a series of M-class solar flares, which happened yesterday. The NOAA forecast model suggests that the two CMEs could merge to form a single cannibal CME. Estimated time of arrival might be tomorrow, as early as tomorrow, or July 30th. Um, where they occurred at was uh, 3765 and 3767. I downloaded the image of that activity. Here you can see, yeah. Um, I'm going to also post this on my page because I took images from the side showing the side view of the plasma heading towards earth so i'll show that to you right now this here is an image what i took earlier while i was putting this data together i mean look at this even the uh, area in the firestone river was boiling away now what's got me concerned is when these cmes end up impacting the earth um, are we going to have another hydrothermal eruption? That is very possible. They were, that one there at Diamond Pole was steaming like these are um, before it erupted. Let me pull this over a little bit farther. I have more videos for you. Um, originally, they started out showing like the roof of the building and different geysers. Um... Yeah, this is very concerning. Look at this area here down at the Firehole River. They're all steaming today. Um, supposedly, it's at least 50 degrees there at Yellowstone. Over here on the right, see how dark that is? The dark steam I've talked about. When we have dark steam, that means it's heated up the ground. Not all rock melts at the same temperature. Um, but what happens is 
the rock that is melting under the ground is coming up in particles with that steam. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I can't believe the baloney that was put out after this hydrothermal eruption there at Diamond Pool. Um, that they were saying that um, it had nothing to do with uh, magma under the ground. It had nothing to do with um, that heating the water there. Well, what do they think? Was it magic? They heated up the water at Diamond Pool? No, it's heated because of the, um, the magma that's under the ground. Heating the water. It's definitely not magic. Was it the, the water didn't heat up to um, super hot temperatures where it erupted um, by friction. No, it's, it's caused by, yeah, the, the lava, which is called magma because it's still under the ground. USGS is only reporting one earthquake within the last 24 hours, a magnitude 2.6 by Harrison, Montana. This was along the area of the trans Charles fault zone where it's slowly extending. It, it's got to do with the, the Yellowstone hotspot. Um, we got stretching going on here and it goes all the way down to the Snake River Plateau which is down here and I got marked out in yellow some of the past eruptions. You know, the, the recent eruptions along the Snake River Plateau aren't that long ago. Um, Native Americans talk about the eruption that they actually witnessed about 2,000 years ago there at the craters of the moon. And then for the Yellowstone area, there was actually another one that occurred about 76,000 years ago. Let's see if I can... Where is it at? I'll show you. All right, that's the area marked out in yellow, Pitchstone Plateau, right there. That was about, oh, 75, maybe 76,000 years ago. I'm sure there's been other more recent smaller lava flows than this one. But USGS doesn't invest... Um, probably next to nothing in money for research. Uh, things that they have found is because of what I call boots on the ground. Well, it was boots on the ground that reported the uh, diamond hot pool eruption. Or another example, when they were working to build roads from Yellowstone all the way up to the border, um, they found past lava flows that they didn't even know existed only because someone else was out there doing the work. Okay, going back to the live view. Yeah, look at all these hot springs, hot pools. Yeah, they're all steaming away today. That one looks a little dirty too, as does that one. The monitor, the borehole for Yellowstone Lake isn't working. The monitor that I've been showing you for Denny Creek, that is not working. But what I noticed for the different data that I do have, this one here is Old Faithful. Look what happened at uh, 2344. That would have been about 644 p.m. local time. The monitor next to it is Norris Junction. And the far right is Madison River. Let me get the time for that. Let me make this one bigger for Madison River. And you can see at the same time, there was a lot of heated water coming up um, in that location. Yeah, 2342, 2343. Let me bring it over a little bit. And we'll go to the seismic signature. Yeah, you can see there was activity going on at the same time, popping of the ground. Again, this is Madison River. Norris Geyser. Uh, monitor you can see we got a lot of popping going on uh, 2343 um, let me pull it over and then we'll go to the spectrogram we go back over here is that the right time yeah anyways yeah not really yeah at this time but if you look below it um, about an hour later, let me go to the seismic signature. 
This one's actually marked in red. Okay, we got popping of the ground going on there at um, Norris Geyser Basin. Let me go to the spectrogram. Don't really show too much. Shows here, this was shallow. I don't know if you can see it. That one was shallow too. As is that one and that one. But what caught my eye is the meters seem to be tilting. Notice the lines here, how they're all kind of screwed up. And then down over here, if I can get it to go back up. Yeah, the data stopped. Uh, let's see, right there. The machines turned off for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why, and it didn't start up until right there. Um, let me go back. Probably almost three hours, well, no, two hours of data that it didn't record. And this is what it's currently showing there. Let me bring it, uh, let me extract that. Yeah, popping of the ground. Yeah, the ground is getting so brittle. we got a small quake right here. Let me extract that right there. And then this is what it was showing when I pulled the files. Yeah, it's getting brittle. But, okay, so let me make that smaller. And we'll go to, to the um, Madison River area. Let me make that bigger. Okay, let me close that out. See how the lines, the tilt meter got all screwed up about the same time? And it stopped recording right there. Yeah, um, 59 minutes after um, midnight for universal time. So that would have been um, 7.59 p.m. local time. Let me go here. Oh, it's not gonna, is it going to show me? Okay, small quake there. Because the lines are all screwed up. It's hard for me to find it. Look at the, see the heat, the pockets of melt. And there's another quake. Let me bring it down. And this is what it was showing when I pulled the file. That looks like a possible Toilino. Yeah, Toilinos. We're getting that. And they never used to show up before at Yellowstone until recently. And it's these signatures are spreading around to different locations, which has got me concerned because of the steam that I'm seeing. And so many geysers and hot pools are steaming away today yeah okay i've talked about too how they got a um it's kind of like a hardened dam dike of lava that is actually along the firestone river that prevents the magma from from going from let's see here we go pull this over this is the mallard lake resurgent dome and so it prevents um, I don't know how deep it is. It's probably fairly deep, but from traveling across to the river. So let me pull this over. Yeah, you can see this other um, geyser is getting kind of distorted. And this one's really been erupting today. Yeah, so something to watch for in the next day, two days, the 29th and the 30th. If we have an increase in um, earthquakes, maybe another hydrothermal eruption. Look at it back over here. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't tell us unless there was um, boots on the ground that actually witnessed it. I had to pause for a minute. The grandkids are happily running up and down. and Yeah, they're high <laughs> squeak little squeals. But anyways, yeah, here we have the solar wind prediction centers and you can see they're saying maybe on the 30th through the 31st we're going to be impacted by these uh, cannibal CMEs. We got the date at the top and then the peak and how it settles down. So we got the 30th right there. It starts to impact us and goes through on the 31st they're saying. So, yeah, 
I don't know how badly it's going to be. Um, hopefully not too bad, but like I said, it could cause earthquakes and adverse weather and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to keep an eye on this throughout the day. What are your thoughts? Yeah, um, there was radio blackouts because of the ultraviolet uh, radiation that ionized the top of the Earth's atmosphere. It caused shortwave radio blackouts over Japan, um, Southeast Asia, and half of the Pacific Ocean. Ham operators may have noticed a loss of signal at frequency below 30 megahertz. I talked about yeah, these radio blackouts in one of my other videos. Um, yeah, so that happened within eight minutes after the uh, CMEs came off the sun. It only takes about eight minutes for that to occur. But for the uh, plasma and, and the solar winds, look at that, I've got two birds there, um, to impact us maybe tomorrow. Yeah, look at that. And you can kind of see maybe some vibrations of the uh, camera, the live camera. We got several birds are just flying around. Look at that. Doing their little dances in the sky. So cool. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't like how much steam we got there at t today there at Yellowstone. Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.